Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and you may know me as the guy who enjoys putting arbitrary scores on lists in the shape of my face. Well, it's time for another list video, but with 100% less Davy meter. Mostly because of the way that the artificer infusions are handled, a lot of them are so specific to what you want to do that ranking them would be impossible. That said, I'm still gonna give my overall opinion on each item so that you can know what to equip the next time that you start smithing. As always, keep in mind that the majority of this is just my opinion, so if you feel like infusions are just a poor man's invocation, feel free to play your games however you want. And really quick, I'd like to give a brief shout out to my new patrons this month. Pat, Adam, Henry, and because I didn't say his name right the first time and this is his year-long anniversary of being a patron to me, XP2 Level 1. Thank you for being my patrons. You are the holy trinity of people who make it so that I don't starve. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Arcane Propulsion Armor. This is the only 14th level infusion besides the magic items, and it's basically just adding boxing gloves with springs attached to your armor. It only does 1d8 damage, so if you take the repeating or returning infusions, both of which are available from the start, this is basically useless. Armor of Magical Strength. If you don't have high strength, this can compensate. If you already have a high strength, this will make the Barbarian eat their heart out. Also, this is one of the Iron Man infusions. Boots of the Winding Path. From a role-playing perspective, these boots throw you back in time a few seconds, and that's cool. From a gameplay perspective, this could potentially be used to either disengage or save yourself from a pit trap. Enhanced Arcane Focus. Basic buff, no reason not to take it if you're looking to fill that last slot. Enhanced Defense. Same as the Arcane Focus, although it should be noted that since armor and shields are different things, you can spend two infusions to give you a dummy thick AC. Enhanced Weapon. Another basic buff, but if you plan on using ranged weapons, there are infusions that give this buff and another thing. Once you reach level 10, however, it becomes a question of whether you want the gimmick or a bigger buff. Helm of Awareness. Considering the the alert feed exists, you really don't have to take this infusion, but if you double up, then your initiative game will be stupid good. Homunculus Servant. You get a little buddy. He's not super useful, but he's good from delivering touch spells from afar. That said, since it has so few hit points, it's probably going to be restricted to touching your friends, since strangers may not appreciate it. Mind Sharpener. Very good infusion. If you're a mage, highly consider getting this. Radiant Weapon. Here we get to the gimmicks. The Radiant Weapon is good for people who want to feel like Jesus, and the blinding effect is great, so there's no reason not to take this. Repeating Shot. Now you can finally have that crossbow six shooter you've been waiting for. Repulsion shield. Combined with the Radiant Weapon, your irritation level will be so big that the DM will just refuse to hit you anymore. Resistant Armor. It does exactly what the name implies. This is actually a really great infusion, because if you happen to go into a desert or a tundra, not only will you be weather resistant, but most enemies in those types of places have an elemental damage gimmick, so you can just swap the resistance type to whatever you need. Returning Weapon. Attach a rubber band to your weapon. Turn your weapon into those stretchy hand things. Bend a knife so it's a boomerang. The reflavoring possibilities are endless. Spell Refueling Ring. If you're a half-caster, which as an artificer you are, then any access to more spells is a lifesaver. All right, now we come to the magic items, so I'll go down the list from level to level, starting with second level! Alchemy Jug. Ask your DM if you can remove the restriction of only one type of liquid per day. The most fun I've had is goofing off with this thing. Bag of Holding. Come on. You know what this is. Cap of Water Breathing. Obviously, if you're taking this, it's because you're going into the water. You don't need me to tell you to take it, just remember that you can swap out which infusions you know every level. Goggles of Night. This is the Dark Vision Challenged Accessibility Item. Rope of Climbing. Useful for dungeon delving and bondage fantasies. Sending Stones. The idea that you can just make a cell phone bothers me, but also it lets you split the party safely. Wand of Magic Detection. So you can either take Detect Magic as a spell, in which case you'll either be using spell slots or casting as a ritual, or you can use an infusion slot to just have a wand do it for you. There's no right answer here. I'm just giving you your options. Wand of Secrets. This one isn't as useful as just bumping up your perception or investigation, but those can still fail. However, in order for this wand to work, you already have to have some idea that there might be something worth finding, or else you just wouldn't use the wand in the first place. So maybe rolling would be better, since there's no limit on that? Yeah. Sixth level! Boots of Elvenkind. Now you're wearing sneakers. Cloak of Elvenkind. For real though, this is probably the better of the two elven items, but the reason you'd take both is because boots protect against hearing, and the cloak protects against seeing. Cloak of the Manta Ray. Consider this an upgrade from the Cap of Water breathing, and it'll serve the same purpose. Eyes of Charming. You get magic contact lenses that let you charm people. Fun fact, I wear contact lenses. They do not charm people, though. That's all me. Gloves of Thievery. Some of these names will just tell you what they do right away, and there's not much for me to talk about besides, you want to steal shit? Wear gloves. Lantern of Revealing. This is sort of an upgrade from the Goggles of Night, but you have to carry it, and it creates a big ol' light source that anybody can see. The advantage of seeing invisible things doesn't come up that often, but if you're really worried about it, you can take this to ease your paranoia. Pipes of Haunting. You play a song to freak people out, but I I've never had the chance during combat to say, hold on, let me get my bagpipes. Although, if you want to get a good idea of how this item works, look up the Aztec Death Whistle. It's safe for work, I promise. Ring of Water Walking. As an artificer, I always feel strapped for infusions. I'm not gonna waste it on the floaty water ring, but you do you. Tenth level! Boots of Striding and Springing. Look, man, if I don't think Jump works as a level 1 spell, I'm not gonna take this as a level 10 infusion. Yeah, you stay unencumbered, but so? Boots of the Winterlands. I'm surprised that this isn't a lower level infusion. Take it when you're ready for the land of critical role spoilers. Bracers of 
of archery. As a DM, I'm fairly liberal with handing out magic items, and these are like my go-to because they're so popular. Brooch of Shielding. I would expect this to increase your AC, but preventing the rarely used force damage is okay, I guess. That magic missile defense also won't come up often. Cloak of Protection. There's the bonus to AC. It's never not good. Eyes of the Eagle. If only my contact lenses were this good. Gauntlets of Ogre Power. These last few items have just been take a stat and make it good, which doesn't leave me a lot to say other than take it if you want your stat to be good. Gloves of Missile Snaring. This item's pretty great, but by level 10, you'll usually be fighting magical creatures more often, so your gloves might not see as much catching as you'd hope. Gloves of Swimming and Climbing. Yup, that thing that the name says it does sure is the thing that it do. Hat of Disguise. Dude, I love this thing. Changing your appearance at will is just so much fun, and there are so many things you can do with it. Headband of Intellect. This one is probably useless on you, given that you're an artificer and therefore already have high intelligence, but maybe you can slap it on an ogre and create the most memorable NPC in Candlekeep. Helm of Telepathy. You can read and control minds, and there isn't a limit on the reading part, so this thing slaps. Medallion of Thoughts. Why? This is just a worse version of the last item. Outside of already having an infusion on your helmet, I can't see why you would ever take this, and even then, just put the good one on somebody else's head. Necklace of Adaptation. I know that this was made to survive things like poisons, but when I see this effect, I can't stop thinking space campaign. Periapt of Wound Closure. Besides the difficult name, this item is amazing. Now, the only way that you can die is if the DM makes you die. Pipes of the Sewers. Seems nice, but since swarms of rats aren't that powerful, you're only going to get use out of this if you happen to fall into a vat of swarming rat. Quiver of Alona. It's just like a bag of holding. Wait, Ring of Jumping. Stop giving me jump spells. Slippers of Spider Climbing. Don't worry guys, I brought my spider chonglas. Ventilating Lungs. This is just a better necklace of adaptation with the obvious caveat that you have to replace your lungs. Still, power comes at a price. Winged Boots. Remember all those jump items? Here you go. Just be Hermes. 14th level! Amulet of Health. Another make stat good item, but I remind you that a higher constitution gives you more health, so this one has a built-in added effect. Arcane Propulsion Arm. At 14th level, you're just taking this as a gimmick, and I don't blame you. Disconnecting your arm to chuck it at something is something that I would do all the time if I could. Belt of Hill Giant Strength. Makes strength good, but slightly past the maximum normally allowed, so this actually has some use. Not too much though, because 21 doesn't put you higher than the normal plus 5. Boots of Levitation. I understand that the winged boots have a duration and that this doesn't, but I still prefer the winged boots, since it doesn't stick me with just vertical movement. Boots of Speed. Very good. Big fast. Bracers of Defense. Most classes can make use of this since they don't use a shield, but even people with a shield can take this and then use their free hand for something else. Cloak of the Bat. If you really want these effects, just play a Twilight Claire you'll get them way earlier. That being said, it's still a cool as hell magic item that I refuse to make the easy joke about. Dimensional Shackles. The first adventurer-proof pair of manacles in the game. Useful for business and for pleasure. Gem of Seeing. Almost free true sight. What's not to love? Horn of Blasting. Theoretically, you can just keep using it over and over, but that 1 in 5 chance to end yourself means that you don't want to spam it unless you happen to be resistant to fire damage. Ring of Free Action. No, this doesn't give you an additional action as cool as that would be, but it does mean that nothing can stop you from taking your actions, so it's not that bad? Ring of Protection. If you gear up with all the AC bonus infusions, you'll break the game. It's just a matter of dedicating that many infusion slots. Ring of the Ram. One of the few directly damaging items on the list, you can use this to replace all of the lukewarm damage options that the Artificer normally gets. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, check out all my social media in the description below, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can afford to bring the Davy meter back. But yeah, Davy out.